In the forest, Zarathustra was speaking with the first person he saw in 10 years. The old man. The old man was similar to Zarathustra. The old man had left society to be among the birds and the bears and the trees. But unlike Zarathustra, the old man viewed mankind as insignificant. Insignificant compared to a higher being, to God, a being of otherworldliness. Zarathustra was baffled by this, <laughs> by this old man's view. He told the old man, I love man, how could you not? But the old man laughed and told Zarathustra not to go back to society, not to waste his time with the people, the sleepers, the everyday man. He warned Zarathustra not to go back because the sleepers would see the fire in Zarathustra's belly when he spoke his wisdom. This fire, this wisdom, this reason would trouble and challenge the sleepers. The sleepers who are so used to hearing particular reasons and values, they would not understand Zarathustra and where he was coming from. And Zarathustra would be called an arsonist or weird because Zarathustra would want to bring radical change, radical change to the sleepers and within the sleepers, minds, their souls. Zarathustra wanted to give birth to a radical metamorphosis inside the sleepers' souls, inside their minds, grumbling and reordering their mental thoughts, their reasons, their knowledge. And as we're familiar with, change is rather unpleasant. It's so unpleasant. Some people would rather die than change their behaviors, their, their habits, or their mental patterns of thinking, living, being, their belief systems, their reasons. This is all because it's so ingrained in us to live a certain lifestyle. Most of us live in this autopilot mode. We go to work, we drive home, and by the end of the day, we're so tired and zonked out that we plop on the couch and we see what's on television. We're awake, but we have no desire no fire inside of us, no bursts of inspiration to create, to inspire, to express our inner voices. We're so beaten down by the system, by society, that we learn to police ourselves, we learn to repress ourselves and our voices, that we conform to the majority's reason, the majority's lifestyle. We go into a deep slumber and we sleep and we wonder why we're not satisfied, we're not happy with our lives. <laughs> Zarathustra and the old man part ways in the forest. The old, the old man goes skipping, hopping, humming off, and Zarathustra is completely baffled by this man's views, what the old man cared about and his particular reason. When Zarathustra was alone and walking towards the town, he spoke to his heart. Could it be possible this old man in the forest has not yet heard anything of this? That God is dead? Now, what we need to realize is that Thus Spoke Spare Zarathustra is a fictional autobiography of what Friedrich Nietzsche was also facing in his time period while he was writing Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Unlike today, when there's a huge majority of us who don't believe in God, um, there's this huge atheist culture. Back when Nietzsche was writing this book, when he was writing the fictional autobiographical character, Zarathustra, they both lived in a time where society believed in God, and God was the creator of all things and meaning. This gave meaning to human life. So, Zarathustra doesn't believe in God. Nietzsche doesn't believe in God. And both of them have to face this meaninglessness because God gave humans meaning and if God is dead then where does human meaning come from if someone doesn't give us give it to us so man has to overcome himself man has to give meaning to his life Zarathustra has to teach humans how to give their lives meaning 
So Therathustra reaches the edge of the forest and saw the town beneath in the valley. Walking down the hill to the valley of man, he found many people gathered in the marketplace, for it had been promised that there would be a tightrope, a tightrope walker. And Therathustra spoke thus to the people, I teach you the overman. Man is something that shall be overcome. What have you done to overcome him? What have you done to overcome yourself? I'll explain how strange and abnormal it is for a soul to stand in front of an audience of strangers and speak our reasons publicly without fear to these people. But the bursting fire in Zarathustra's belly spoke and Zarathustra hoped that he would reach others. But his wisdom, his words were not reached very well because these words were spoken from an alien tongue. Just imagine a stranger trying to convince you, trying to convince us to change our thinking, to change our habits, our ways of being and thinking in the world. How often do we change our ways and change our habits for ourselves, by our own self? Well, we never. And then just try to imagine changing our habits and our ways of being for a stranger. This wouldn't happen unless we were extremely open to change, but this doesn't happen. So as Zarathustra continued his speech, his first public teaching, all beings so far have created something beyond themselves and do not want to be the ebb of this great flood and even go back to the beast rather than overcome man. What is ape to man? A laughing stock or a painful embarrassment. And man shall be just that for the overman, a laughing stock or a painful embarrassment. You have made your way from worm to man, and much in you is still worm. Once you were apes, and even now, too, man is more than an ape. This is because man is too afraid to look within himself that he turns to this being that he has created in his mind, this idea of God, who is more perfect than himself, more perfect and divine. He just views his, himself as an insignificant person. And this is why man is laughable. This is why man has to overcome himself. This is why you have to overcome yourself, my friends, because there is no God, there is no being that is better than you. You just have to look within you and trust that you are enough, that you are a gift. I believe in you. Look forward to more videos coming your way. I'll see you soon.